This is probably the best new card since the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi. Today we're going to do a review of the new Capital One Venture X card. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, sacrifice a like for the algorithm gods, and if you are someone new here and you like stuff like this, consider subscribing. For this video, we're going to have three different parts. We'll start off with a super basic review, then do a deeper dive, and then my final thoughts into the sustainability of this. We'll also mostly focus on the card and its benefits rather than the intro bonus. Generally, intro bonuses always make sense, and I don't feel like refilming this if the bonus increases or decreases in a few months. Know that the intro bonus is well worth it as long as you can hit the minimum spend requirement. Starting off, the card has a $395 annual fee, and this is going to be charged on your first statement. It's pretty much right away. I feel like that's always a question for new people. If you do any amount of travel, this card is a keeper card. This means that by virtue of you having it and using it for its intended purpose, even if you don't use it too much, you're going to effectively be paid for it. It might not be a lot, it might only be $5, but you're still coming out ahead. A big part of this is going to be from the $300 travel credit that you get from the card that you can use on the Capital One travel portal. This includes flights, hotels, as well as car rentals, and it's going to be every card member year. So it's not something that ends on December 31st. It's a function of when you got the card. So doing some very, very quick math, $395 minus $300 means that you have an effective $95 annual fee. On top of that, though, for every account anniversary, you get 10,000 bonus miles. There's no spend requirement for this. It's just a virtue of you keeping the card. So if you get it right now, November 2021, in November 2022, 2023, 2024, and so on, you're going to get 10,000 bonus miles. At a minimum, these miles are going to be worth one cent per point. So 10,000 times one cent is $100 in value. So doing the quick math that we did before again, you're effectively being paid $5 to keep the card. We'll talk about this a bit more towards the middle of the video, but if you want to do transfer partners, you can generally get two to four cents per point. That means that 10,000 miles can be 200 to $400 in value. Main takeaway is that you're getting 400 to 500 to $700 in value for paying $395, which is well worth it for me. This card is also a Visa Infinite card and it has no foreign transaction fees. You get 10x venture miles for hotels as well as car rentals that you book through their portal. You get 5x venture miles for flights booked through their portal and then 2x for pretty much everything and anything else. For a lot of people, this can easily be your one card setup or your catch-all card for everything else. All right, cool, but what about things like airport lounges? Number one is that you get a Priority Pass card and this allows you to bring two guests with you for free and you also can use this at restaurants. There's some other issuers that have Priority Pass cards, but you can't use them at the Priority Pass restaurants. There's also a very cool trick here if you are someone who has a family and you wanna play around with this a little bit. Number two is that you get access to the new Capital One lounges, so the Venture X lounges, and the first one is in Dallas, and they're opening up two more next year in 2022. Main takeaway is that the Venture X is a very solid card. Even if you're someone who just takes one or two trips a year, I think it's an easy recommendation. Capital One pretty much took the best elements from a lot of these issuers and made their own Exodia. If you want to learn more about this card or pretty much any other card out there and you want to support the channel, we have links on our website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. Huge way to support the channel since we're focused on a niche and trying to be very informative rather than just going for views. As always, thank you guys in advance because without you guys, I wouldn't be here. Let me know down below what your quick thoughts on the card are, but let's do the deeper dive. Let's actually just reverse it for the deeper dive because I think it's easier to follow. So lounge access, that sounds really great. One of the really cool things with this card is that you can add up to four authorized users for no annual fee, and they also get Priority Pass cards and access to the Capital One lounges. So this is pretty amazing because it allows you to gift airline lounge access to up to four people that you trust. One of the reasons people like the Chase Ritz Carlton card was that you can do exactly this. Super quick example, but let's say you have a 19 year old who is off to college. You wanna give them a card as a backup in case something happens, that way they have something, and this gives them lounge access without having to spend a lot of money. You were giving them a backup card anyways, and now when they visit you, they can go to the lounge. One of the negative things about the Capital One lounges is that there's not that many of them. So there's one in Dallas right now. It looks pretty good though, but they still need to expand their footprint. Let's actually show some pictures of the lounge and this is going to be from God Save the Points because I haven't had the chance to visit yet. So it's 10,000 square feet near Terminal D and the amenities seem pretty solid. There's a bunch of semi-private work areas, relaxation rooms with blankets, grab and go food items like sandwiches. There's even an actual dining area, espresso bar, local beers. Some people probably won't like this, but there's a yoga room, cycling room with Peloton bikes. You can also shower off after all of this. 
Next is going to be Washington Dulles as well as Denver. So it is going to be a slower expansion, but long term, I think this is a good move. One issue is going to be crowding, but these are pretty large lounges, and a lot of the people who Capital One typically goes for would not pay money to go into a lounge anyways, and they probably don't want... A lot of people see a $400 annual fee card and they scoff at it, saying that it's for stupid people. So people who do get it, people who can run the numbers, are going to benefit the most. But some of the other issuers, they're after a different audience who are more cost agnostic. I think we'll be fine in the short term, but yeah, maybe in a year or two, it's going to be a bit messier. Moving into the multiplier part, not really much to add here other than the fact that this works really well if you have a family. So if you have a player too who hates me, so whenever you turn me on, they're like, oh God, he's going to get another card. He's going to apply for another card on my behalf. So if you have someone like that, then this is pretty good because it's two X back on everything and the fact that you can add them for free. I realize that just because I'm fine with 30 or 40 cards, that's not most people. I kind of crap talk the portals for bookings because I don't really like them, but I think this one is pretty good. So value might not be there, but they have a lot of features that are pretty surprisingly useful, like freezing your price and also just price tracking. There are a bunch of nuances there and rules involved, but I think it's a good thing. And Capital One, I would say, is one of the more innovative companies in the space. In case you're not familiar, they've been acquiring a lot of tech companies. Some of them haven't been doing that well, so they acquire them because they're on a downtrend. But yeah, Paribus in 2016 and then Wikibuy in 2018. I would say that there's two players buying up tech companies and the fact that Capital One is one of them is a pretty interesting play. Let's talk about upside. So Capital One Miles can be transferred out to a bunch of partners and Capital One keeps adding to this list. Some of these are going to be high value ones, such as Air Canada, as well as Turkish and Singapore Airlines, while other ones are ones that you've heard of, but might not be as useful for our purpose. So Emirates and Qantas being pretty good examples of ones that might be a bit harder to play with. As of filming this, the transfer rate is one-to-one. -one. The really interesting thing is that these are pretty good rates because Capital One used to have some of these at two to one. So in the past, you would have to have 100,000 points just to make 50,000, and now it's 100,000 to 100,000. If for someone looking to fly business or first, it's pretty easy to get two cents per point. People also confuse this, but just because you transfer over to something like Air Canada Aeroplan, that does not mean you need to fly Air Canada. You can fly a lot of their Star Alliance family member partners. Let's put 60 seconds on the clock and do a super simple example. So if you want to fly from the US to either South Africa or to Australia, it's going to be 170,000 miles for round trip business class. For Australia, something like ANA or Singapore Airlines, while South Africa, probably Swiss or Turkish. The cheapest round trip ANA flight right now is $7,400. If you can't travel as long, then it could be as expensive as $9,000. 7,400 divided by 1,700,000 miles, that's going to be 4.35 cents per point. Even if you knock that number down by half, that's more than two cents per point. So pretty good value there. If you did economy to Sydney, that's about $1,100. So using points, that's 110,000 miles. 110,000 miles versus 170,000 miles, I'll happily pay 60,000 more miles to do business class, but that's just me. For team one card, this is a pretty good earner. For team 40 cards, this is a top off option and another intro bonus. The 10,000 anniversary miles in this case could easily be worth 200 to $400 in value at two or four cents per point. On top of this, you get a $100 global entry or TSA pre-check credit every four years. Probably not as useful for everyone if you already have been playing the game, but still a nice add-on. It's also a Visa Infinite card, so you get a lot of the travel protections, the cell phone coverage, and also the access to the luxury collection properties, Visa Luxury Hotel Collection. So when you book expensive properties, you end up getting upgrades and you get credits. I generally look into Vegas because that's the sweet spot. That's where you can get the most value. And that's also where it's the most affordable, where it's not $1,000 a night. I happily pay one or $200 a night and then get a $100 dining credit. If you're a car rental person, this also provides you with Hertz status. Your up to four authorized users also get this status. By virtue of having this card, you get Hertz Presidential Circle, which is the farthest right category status one that's publicly available. And this gets you guaranteed upgrades. You can skip the counter and you can also get additional drivers for free. Normally, in order to get the status, you would either need to do 15 car rentals in a year or spend $3,000 with them. Main takeaway is that I think Capital One has addressed pretty much every single problem I've had with their cards and their system over the past few years. This is probably the best new card since the Chase Sapphire Reserve. 
Maybe there have been more interesting ones where you get something like diamond status for a hotel group, but that's not as useful for everyone. There is a question about sustainability, but even if something like the Chase Sapphire Reserve, that came out in 2016, they did everything they wanted to do in the next four years, and then they only increased the annual fee in 2020. Their goal was to grab the market, and that's exactly what they did. In the credit card world, four years is a lifetime. That's another Sapphire bonus. I do think Capital One has a long-term goal here, so I wouldn't be too scared of them trying to rug you in a year. That just doesn't really make sense. This seems like a very long-term play. Could I be wrong? Definitely, but I feel like I have a pretty good pulse on the credit card world and on the consumer finance fintech world. Again, if you want to learn about this card or pretty much any other card out there and you want to support the channel, links on our website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card and are you looking to change up your setup or do you think you'll just add it for the intro bonus and then maybe as a keeper card? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. If you got value from this, give it a thumbs up and if you didn't, consider re-watching this in 0.75 speed. If you know anyone else who might benefit from this, share this with them because it'll probably help them out. Otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.